is up good morning happy sunday morning so glad that we are all online together this morning super super stoked to see you guys this week we are wrapping up our time in esther and we're going to be talking about how we can have courage when we are called to do big things have courage when we're called to do big massive things i'm super stoked to be rounding out our series on esther with this we're going to be going through a bunch of chapters but it's going to be really really awesome as we jump in, let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are a God who loves us, that you are, are, are a God who is with us. And Lord, we thank you that you are a God who provides for us, even when we are seemingly called to do things that are bigger than what we can do, or when we feel like we are being pulled to do something that is outside of our realm. And we thank you that you're a God who gives us all that we need to do different tasks ahead of us. And Lord, as we dive into this last chapter of Esther, we ask that you would just be with us, Lord, and that you would just teach us so that we could hear from you and learn from you, Lord, today. In your name we pray. Amen. Have you guys ever accomplished something that you thought was impossible? Have you ever finished a super massive test? Or have you ever finished a really big project? Have you ever done something that you thought was impossible? Turn to a friend, a neighbor, a parent, tell them if you've done that, ready, go. I've ever done something that I thought was impossible, but I've definitely done tasks, completed things that were super, super big, right? I've written a book, basically, that's 400 pages for my dissertation. I've made different sports teams. I've learned how to drive successfully, some would argue, unsuccessful, others would argue, but I have accomplished things. We have accomplished things in our lives that have seemed pretty massive. Maybe you've landed a trick on your bike or on a skateboard that you didn't think you would land. Or maybe you also made a sports team that felt like it was out of your reach. Or maybe you just did really well on a test or a quiz or a paper that you didn't think you could do well on. Well, today we're finishing up this time in Esther, in the book of Esther, and we're gonna be talking about how we ha can have courage when we are faced with big tasks. We can have courage when we're faced with things that feel impossible. Let's do a little recap, a little rewind, and give ourselves a little context about where we're at so far with the book of Esther. So remember, we started off in chapter one with Queen Z King Xerxes having a massive party, getting mad at his wife, deciding to find another one. We see Esther, with that, who was chosen as this wife, and she became queen. And we see her uncle, Mordecai, who decided not to kneel and worship Haman. Haman was this guy in King Xerxes' court. And so Haman decided to kill Mordecai and his family and all the other Jews. We see Esther hearing this plan from Mordecai. And we see her and Mordecai waiting with God as they search for an answer. So those are the first couple of chapters. Well, today we're reaching the end. Today we're gonna jump into chapter five and read all the way to the end of Esther. And we're gonna see how Esther was called to do crazy things, the scary things, and yet she did them with God. We're gonna start with chapter five and we're gonna pick our story back up. So we read in chapter five that on the third day, after this three days of waiting and fasting, Esther put on her royal robes and she stood in the inner court of the palace in front of the king's hall. Now remember that Esther told us in the last chapter that showing up uninvited, that just showing up in her robes without being summoned by the king could actually get her killed. So this simple act is actually pretty extreme. This simple thing of like, all right, today's the day, God, we're doing it, was a big step, lots of courage. In verse 2, we read that when King Xerxes saw Queen Esther standing at the court, he was pleased. So Esther, not murdered. And Esther decided that she was going to figure out a way to save her people. And she starts off this plan by inviting King Xerxes and Haman to a banquet. And the banquet she was planning wasn't going to happen for the next couple of days. 
And so a few things happened as they were prepping for this banquet. Haman saw Mordecai and he was angry that he was still alive. And so he plotted to kill Mordecai and to put his head on a big stick uh, outside of the hall so that everybody could walk by and see Mordecai's head because Mordecai would be dead. And so Haman decided to build this super massive pillar waiting to kill Mordecai because he was still upset. And another thing happened that the night before the banquet, the king couldn't sleep. And so he was doing some reading of these records in his little like library. And he found out that Mordecai had saved him from a plot. And so he asked if Mordecai had been rewarded. And of course he hadn't. And so the king decides in front of Haman to honor Mordecai. So we have two things happening here while Esther is prepping for the banquet. We have Haman on one side, seeing that Mordecai was still alive, being super angry, building a super big pillar to put his head on because he wanted to kill him soon. On the other side, we see the king who can't sleep, decide to go read some of his records because what do you do when you can't sleep? You read boring things. And we see the king realizing that Mordecai had saved him from death and deciding to honor Mordecai and doing this honor in front of Haman. And so in chapter 6, verses 7, we see the king honoring Mordecai. We see the king putting a super special robe on Mordecai. We see him uh, putting him on a horse. And ironically, Haman had to help with all of this. So the king orders Mordecai, and Haman is the one who has to put on the special robe and to lead the horse into the city. All of that is happening before the banquet. And then we get to chapter 7 of Esther. Chapter 7 is the big dinner party that Esther is throwing. So Haman and King Xerxes and Esther are chilling at, at the banquet. Esther says, If I have found favor with you, your majesty, and if it pleases you, grant me my life. This is my petition. And spare me and my people. This has been my request. For I and my people have been sold to be destroyed, killed, and annihilated. See, the king is having such a great time at the banquet, and he is so enthralled by Esther that he asks her for a request, where he says, whatever you want, I will grant it to you as the king. And Esther says that her request, her desire, is to save herself. And not just herself, but her entire people. And we read through that, and it's like, ooh, all right. That's probably a good thing to ask for, but that must have been terrifying. Because not only was she revealing who she was, but she was revealing who her family were in the midst of these people that had already plotted to kill her. The king had already decided to go through with Haman's plot, and Haman obviously wanted everybody dead. And yet Esther took this step, and she said, my one request is that you save me and you save my group. She was adding herself. But she takes a step, the request one step further. See, the king understands that Esther isn't just saying that her people have been mistreated, but the, he understood that they had been sold out, that they had been plotted against. And so the king asked Esther, well, who had originated this plot? Who, who started this? And Esther said, an adversary and an enemy, the vile Hanam. This is kind of that offshoot moment, right? Ahman was chilling at the banquet with the king and with Esther, and he hears the king ask Esther what she wants. And Esther says, I want my people and my life to be preserved. And then the king says, well, of course, but then who, who started this plot? And Esther says, well, it's, it's this dude. It's this guy. Esther was given a moment. She was given this situation, and she was courageous. And she took that step knowing that God had placed her there and she went for it. She asked for everything. So what happens, right? We have two options. Either the king says, now nah, you're dead. Or the king says, yeah, and something else happens. What do you guys think? Well, obviously the story is about Esther. So we would imagine that Esther does prevail and spoiler alert, she does. So we see the king granting Esther her request. Not only is he going to save her and her people, uh, but he also decides to punish Haman because Haman had gone against the queen. And so we see the king uh, in a few verses returning and catching Haman, and we see him punishing 
killing Haman. In fact, we see the king chopping off Haman's head and placing it on that pole that Haman had created for Mordecai. They impaled Haman on the pole that they had set up for Mordecai, and the king's fury, we read, is subsided. I mean, you can't make this stuff up, right? In the middle of the book of Esther, we see Esther after a period of waiting, after leaning into God. We see her bringing this request to the king. We see her saving her life and, and her whole community's life. And then on the flip side, we see the bad guy. We see Haman not only be killed, but get his head chopped off and placed on the pole that he had created for Mordecai's head. I mean, it would make a great movie. The same day we read uh, that Haman was killed was also the day that the king gave Esther Haman's land and Mordecai was given the job to oversee the land. So not only was her people saved and she saved, but she was also given the land of, her, of Haman. Along with that, obviously we read that the Jews were not destroyed and that they were given special access to gather together. And we read in verse 16 that for the Jews, it was a time of happiness and joy and gladness. And we see the last part of the chapter, or the book of Esther, we see the people creating a festival to celebrate. To celebrate uh, what had happened to them, to celebrate their Esther's courage, to celebrate the fact that they weren't going to be killed. And they continue this celebration for the Jewish calendar. And they observe these days of feasting and joy and happiness. The last couple of books of Esther is Esther stepping out with courage. Esther stepping out with faith. Esther stepping out knowing that God had placed her in that situation. And we see it working out for Esther. We see her saving her people and herself. We see her setting up this time of joy and celebration. What we learn from this last few chapters of Esther is that we can have courage when we're called to do big things. And we can be courageous and faithful and we can step out knowing that God has put us in these situations. And right, it kind of all makes sense in the book of Esther. We, uh, two weeks ago, we talked about how we can be faithful and we can lean into God despite the crazy, which is what Esther did. And then the last week we talked about how our timing isn't always God's timing, but that we can wait in faithfulness, which is what Esther did. And this week we see how those two things bring us up into this situation, bring us into this new calling. Esther had to go through a tough, crazy situation, and she had to wait with God in order to have the courage, in order to have all the plans for that final act. And same thing for us. Sometimes we have to go and live in the crazy, and sometimes we have to wait with God in order to know, in order to see what God is calling us to. Esther knew that all of her time was building up to this big event. And when that big event came, she stepped out with courage and faithfulness. We know she could have died multiple times in this journey. She could have died when she was approaching the queen, the king. She could have died when she revealed herself as uh, somebody who was a part of this tribe. And she could have died in the after effects if Haman was angry or if the king said no. She could have died, literally died, multiple times on the journey. And yet she knew that she was gonna have to step out with courage. She knew that God was calling her to bigger things. And she knew that ultimately God would take care of her. We see this story reverberated throughout the Bible, right? God calling people to be brave. God calling people to uncomfortable things. And yet God being faithful in the midst of that. We see it throughout the Old Testament. We see it with Esther, obviously. We see it with Ruth. We see it in the second half of the Old Testament with all the judges and the, and the um, people who are having prophetic messages. We see it in the Bible. We see the disciples having to leave their normal lives and take that faith step. And we see it with Paul, who we talk about all the time, right? People knowing that God is calling them to something big and taking that step and being courageous. And the same thing happens in our lives. <laughs> Maybe not to the extent of Esther. Most of us probably aren't being uh, called right now to save a people, but maybe we are. Uh, we're certainly being called right now to take a step in faith and to be God's hands and feet here on earth. 
maybe that means that some of us have to have a conversation with a classmate that, uh, that we've been having a hard time with. Maybe it means we need to be nicer or better to our family. Maybe it means we need to be more respectful to our parents and the rules they've given us. Lame, I know. But maybe that's what it is. Maybe some of us feel like God is pulling us to have faith conversations with some of our friends. Maybe God is calling us to give up a bad habit that we started in quarantine. See, God has laid something on our hearts, and we need to have the courage to step into that. We need to have the faith and know that God is with us as we step into that. Just as Esther knew that she had to have courage to do big things. Friends, God has placed something in our lives this week that we will be called to do. It could be small, it could be big. We don't know. But we know that when we feel like God is pulling us into something, when God is propelling us to have a conversation, or to pray for somebody, or to give up something, or to listen better, when we feel that pull from God, we know that that's kind of our calling. And that we have to have courage in order to lean into what God is doing. Just as Esther here had courage and leaned into what she was being called to do. It worked out for Esther. She saved her people. She saved her community. And it worked for us too. When God is pulling at your heart, lean into that. So what does that look like for us practically? Well, this one's a little bit weird, right? Because all of us are going to have something different. So what I want us to do this week is I want us to be ready to answer God's call. I want us to be attentive to what God is pulling on our hearts. And I want us to lean into that. And you're going to think of a story. You're going to take that time and you're going to craft a story out of it. And you're going to tell that story in small group. So at some point this week, if God, if you feel like God is telling you to say hi to a family member that you haven't said hi to, if you feel like God is calling you to give up 30 minutes of screen time to pray, that's a long prayer, but do something with God. If you feel like God is telling you to help a parent with a sibling, lean into what you feel like God is telling you to do. Have courage, take that action, and then you're going to tell us about that in your story this week in small group. That's your challenge. I'm really excited. I'm going to be doing this challenge too, leaning into God and having courage to lean into God. Friends, we are finished with Esther. And Esther is this incredible story of being patient, of living in the chaos, of waiting, and then being courageous when God calls you to things. And it's a story each of us are feeling this week. Each of us will have a moment this week where we feel like Esther. Remember that, tell us in small group, and lean into what God is doing in your lives. I love you all. I'm super stoked for small group. I'll see you guys throughout the week. See ya.